Welcome back everybody to another VBA tutorial. In today's video, we're gonna cover a new reference library. We're gonna be covering the Microsoft Shell and Scripting reference library. So with this particular library, we can basically do all sorts of system operations, things like opening certain files, folders, being able to uh, create new shell objects, at which point we can execute uh, different files using that shell and just getting different information about our system. There is kind of a lot to it, and so it probably will be broken into a couple of videos, but this is gonna be the first where we'll kind of just get familiar with it and maybe do some things like executing a particular um, file or something like that. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna go up to your tools portion of your ribbon, then go down to references, and you'll notice right here, but I actually have the Microsoft Shell controls and automation reference available for us. And so with this particular reference, that will allow us to create our shell object and all sorts of different other things related to that. And so if you don't have it enabled, which you probably don't, you can just scroll down to M for Microsoft, and then it should be, where is it? S, somewhere with shell and something like that. So somewhere right around here. And so once you find that library, you just want to make sure that it is enabled and has a checkbox next to it. And once you've done that, you are good to go. And then from here, we can start coding. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new subroutine. We'll call it shell controls. Uh, and then from here, first other thing we'll do is we'll declare some object variables. So the first one is we will do a shell object. This will be the actual the actual shell that we can execute different things with and all sorts of other things like that. And so we go to our shell 32 library and then we create a new shell object. We also might be working with some folders. So we're gonna do a shell object folder and then this will be, as you guessed, a shell 32 folder. And then inside that folder, there can be items and those basically represent all the items in a particular folder, so it's a collection. And then if you wanna work with a particular item, you would just call it a folder item. So we're gonna declare something called folder items as a shell 32, and then it's gonna be a folder items collection. There are multiple, from what I can tell, you just need folder items. And then next we got folder item, and that will be shell 32 folder item, so a single item. We're gonna also uh, execute a Python script. So these are just gonna be the variables that we need in order to do that. And in this particular video, I will be actually be covering how to execute a Python script with arguments. So if you have arguments that you wanna pass through, that is what we're gonna be covering in this video. So declare our variables. Okay, then from here, what we need to do is we need to create a new shell object. So create a new shell object. So we're gonna set our shell object variable equal to a new shell 32 and then a shell object. Okay, so now that we have a new shell object, let's execute our Python script. So I actually have some that already typed out for us here and I'm just gonna leverage that and then discuss it. That way I don't do any kind of typos where I'm gonna get myself confused. So right now all I have is a Python script right here, and then I have some arguments that I'm passing through. In this particular Python script, all it's gonna do is it's gonna count the number of arguments that are provided, and so really it's just gonna be this, and then this, and then this. So it should come back with three, and then it's gonna modify our Excel worksheet where it's gonna populate this little guy right there, so just that particular cell value. And I actually remember now, I don't need the exe file. And so this is kind of the neat thing about the shell object is I don't need to specify the Python exe location, I can just provide the script and I can just provide the arguments and I'm good to go. Notice that I did surround these in a single quote. Uh, keep in mind if your path does contain spaces, you do need to do a triple quote. Arguments for the most part can be left just as is so they can be surrounded by a particular um, single quote. And then all I'm doing is I'm calling my shell object and then there's a shell execute method where I specify a file and then I have some arguments that I wanna pass through. And so ideally, if I run this, it should work. Okay, perfect. So it executed the script and then it populated that uh, range A1 with the number of arguments that we passed through. So this would be the file itself and then um, the two arguments, which actually are just two strings, arg1 and arg2. <laughs> 
Okay, so now that we've seen how to execute a script, what are some other things that we can do with this particular library? Well, for example, we can get some inform uh, get some system information, so get some system information. I will be providing some links in the actual one that I post to GitHub. There's a lot of different information we can get about our system. There's no way I'm gonna be able to do it all in a single tutorial. So I'm just gonna be providing some links. If you have any questions, you should just go there and it will usually tell you if you're looking for a particular uh, aspect about your system, you know, this would be the string that you have to pass through. So for example, I can get the amount of memory on my particular system. So I can say, call my shell object. I can, if I can type, I can get system information. And then there is a string that is called physical, what is it, memory installed. And then from here, what we can do is that will return basically the amount of memory on my system. And then we have something called double click, which basically it's just the double click time. And then here I can get that as well. So it's, it's really kind of just repeating the same steps. So if I want, I can do double click time. And like I said, I will be providing a URL in the GitHub information in case you need to know all the different possible ones you can get, because you can get technically a lot. And then we got, um, what is it, like uh, processor speed? That'll get be the last one I get. And then we have get system information, and then for that one, it's gonna be processor speed. I don't know why I can't type today, it's driving me crazy. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's print out the details. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do debug.print, and then we're gonna do memory. We're gonna do debug print, and then I want double click, and then I'm gonna do debug.print, and I want the processor speed. And then just so I don't have this run again, I am gonna not execute that one. What did I do wrong? Did I misspell it? Physical, oh, that's what I thought. I misspelled it, it's always something. Okay, oh, I guess there wasn't any double click time, I guess that was one. But anywho, um, we have basically the amount of memory that I have installed and then our processor speed. Obviously, depending, back, depending on what information is being sent back to us, it kind of has different interpretations. So this is, I think, in bytes or something like that. And I think, I can't remember what that is, I'm not gonna, act like I know which one that is, but. <laughs> okay, so now that we've seen how to get some system information, again, what are some other things that maybe, um, you know, we, we might wanna, you know, determine about our particular system. So for example, there is actually something on here too that I explored, again, not all the stuff is gonna make necessary sense, but um, there's a particular setting that we can get on our system. So setting, for example, about like hidden folders, right? So maybe I wanna know, what is the system setting that I have currently enabled for hidden folders? Can you see them or can you not see them? And so here I would get a system setting. And so again, there's tons of system settings that you can potentially get information on. Unfortunately, you're just gonna have to kind of read the documentation to see exactly what your options are. They do have special naming conventions, but for this particular one, if I do SSF show sorry, it's all caps, all objects. This is basically asking the question, what is the system setting that you currently have set for hidden folders? So false means it's not set, true means it's set. And so when I run this, what this is telling me is that it is not set. So I actually can see my hidden folders, which makes sense because I actually make it where I can on my system see hidden folders. So for that particular variable, it is coming back as false because it's telling me on my system, one of the settings that I have enabled is that I can see hidden folders. Again, depending on what the actual setting is, it might return back something different to you. So that's getting a system setting. Let's go kind of to the next uh, big topic, which is folders. So maybe we wanna grab a particular folder. And so this one's a little bit different. I mean, it's not, 
hard to wrap your head around, but you just kind of have to know how to approach it. So first, we have to define a name space. And so this is kind of like a special folder name or something like that. Uh, basically, it's just a folder. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set our shell object folder equal to our shell object. There's a namespace method, and then I just have to, again, pass through a certain directory, which is this a folder. Again, there's multiple options. I will be putting links down below as to what you can set them to. One I can get is, um, I think this, this is like the most recent one. So recent folder, if I remember correctly. And I gotta make sure I put that as all caps. Recent, yes, okay. Okay, and then from here, what we can do is, if we have a folder, then continue. So if we have a folder, then continue. So this is just adding a little bit more logic into our code. So we'll say if not shell object folder is nothing. Again, this is just a fancy way of doing it to say, hey, as long as we have that folder, then you can uh, continue. And then I'm gonna do my end if. And so something we might wanna get is uh, out, we might wanna get the uh, folder title. So print out the folder title. And then from here, we'll do debug print shell object folder. And then I might want the title, for example. I can also see who the parent folder is. So print out the parent folder. So we'll do debug print shell object folder, and then I will get the parent folder. So let's see what we get with this. So we get recent items, and then the parent folder is Windows, not surprising. Okay, so let's grab an item from that folder. So grab the item in the folder. And so we'll set our folder item, or folder items, sorry, equal to the shell object folder. And then there is an items method which returns all the items. So the first thing I might wanna do is count the number of items we have. So uh, count the number of items. And so we'll say debug.print folder items dot count. Okay, so that returns the count. Next, we might wanna loop through all the items. So loop through all the items in the recent folder. And so we'll say for each folder item in folder items, next. And what's some information we might want? Well, maybe I want the path. So let's print the path. Print the path to the folder. And so we'll say debug.print folder item, and then we'll get the path. Uh, we might wanna get the type. We might wanna get the size. There's all sorts of stuff we can get, right? Let's see what else we have. Ooh, not that one. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, we can get the name. That's always fun. Print the name. And let's see what we get. So as you can tell, it returns the file, which we were expecting, and then it also provides uh, the name as well. So you can tell my recent one, I have a ton of different recent uh, files in here. But this is, again, an easy way to get access to that information from VBA. Okay, so the final topic that we're gonna talk about in this particular vi video is about Windows. So I'm talking like the actual physical Windows for a folder. Keep in mind, this tends to be a little bit strange in certain regards. It doesn't necessarily work in the way that you necessarily would expect it to. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open up a window just to be safe. I'm gonna to have to declare some more variables, so declare some more variables. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dim all windows as just simply an object. And then we're gonna define a single window, and this is not intuitive, but it's an Internet Explorer object. Who would have guessed, right? Who would have guessed? We're gonna grab all the windows, and so we're gonna set 
all windows equal to our shell object. And then there is a windows method which will return all the windows. Okay, so the first thing I might wanna do is count all the windows. And so we'll say debug print all windows dot count. And then what I'm also gonna do just before I forget, I am gonna comment that out. I don't want that to run again. Okay, and then from here, we can grab a particular window. So grab a single window. And so we're gonna set IE object equal to all windows dot item. And then we will debug print IE object dot path. Let's see what we get. Okay, so this one simply returns C windows. Again, nothing, I guess, super helpful. I've never actually tried to do, yeah, see, it looks like that one. Last time I tried it, and I tried it on a couple different computers, the weird thing is it doesn't seem to actually return more than one window, so I don't really know where this kind of comes in handy. I'm gonna keep exploring it a little bit just to see maybe if I missed something. But for whatever reason, it seems to only return the C Windows one. If anyone else has come across that or they've used this library before, I'd be kind of curious to see what your thought is on that. But for some reason, it does only seem to provide that kind of aspect for it. But with that being said, that does conclude our video on this particular topic. There's still a couple more videos to come. But at this point, if you have any questions about what we've covered so, so far about getting system information, system settings, getting particular namespace folders, and then the items within those folders, please put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. You always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We will see you in our next video.